in the wake of the deadly mass shooting in Colorado on Monday. Joining us now to talk more about that issue is Congresswoman Nakima Williams of Georgia and where a gunman just over a week ago killed eight people. Uh, Congressman, thanks very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Congresswoman, I should say. Your community there, you represent uh, Atlanta, you uh, represent John Lewis's old district there, uh, still reeling from the shootings last week. Now we're faced with this mass shooting in Boulder. You tweeted it, quote, we must end gun violence in this country and get the guns out of the hands of people who want to inflict harm. I, I know there's a lot of Republican opposition to gun control measures that the House has already passed. Uh, what can you do? to reach across that aisle, try to find some kind of common ground, because the American people do want to see enhanced background checks and things like this. Is there anything to, to be done? So what, what I'm going to continue to do is represent the people that I was sent to Washington be, to be the voice of. And I know that the country, people in this country overwhelmingly support sensible gun control. We don't need weapons of war. We don't need assault weapons on the streets in this country. And for people who are comparing this to drunk drivers on the street, we also, we take away people's right to drive when they break the law. We require tests for people to drive in this country. And so it's kind of a flawed argument on their part. But what I do know is that I have a five-year-old son, and when I drop him off to school every day, I should be assured that he's going to come home safe. And we there are things that we can put in place, like the bills that we just passed on the House side last week, just doing background checks. The shooter in Atlanta was able to buy the gun, and a couple of hours later, he used it to kill, to murder eight people in Georgia. So there are things that we can put in place to slow down and curb these mass assaults that we're seeing in our country. We, While the country was shut down, it was unfortunate that it took a global pandemic to curb the mass shootings that we saw in this country. We need to make sure that as leaders in this country, we're moving forward to address these concerns. And that's what House Democrats did last week without Republican support. And I'm calling on our United States senators to do the same thing. And Congresswoman, Vice President Harris today in an interview refused to discuss potential executive actions on gun control. Do you want to hear the White House commit to doing something if the Senate doesn't act? What I want is the Senate to do their job. This bill, these two bills now lie within the Senate, and there are more things that we can do on the House side. Everybody has a role to play in curbing these mass shootings that we're seeing in this country. Ten people were murdered in Boulder, and they won't be going home to their families. Ten people who just went to work that day or just showed up in the grocery store who won't be returning home. It's all of our responsibility to do something about this. And what, how do you... How do you ensure people who are worried that, you know, who want to keep guns for their own protection or for hobbies like hunting, for example, how do you ensure those people that you're not trying to come and take away their guns? Well, first, you don't need an AR-15 to go hunting. That's one thing. And a well-regulated militia is what I um, hear people talking about. Regulated means just that, regulated. It does not mean that you should be able to walk around with lone guns in grocery stores so that people don't know what your intentions are. There are things that we can put in place so that people can still have their guns, still go hunting, but regulate the violence that we're seeing in this country by keeping the guns out of the hands of people who don't need them. We Things like background checks and a waiting period to get a gun are sensible solutions to making sure that we are not giving people who have at the spur of the moment, want to go and get a gun and maybe pass the background check right then at the moment, but show up later in the day and massacre eight people at spas in Georgia. These are things that we can absolutely do something about that will not take guns away from responsible gun owners. And that, that is a concern. I want, to, I want to turn to another subject as long as we've got you here. Uh, I, today actually marks what's called equal pay day. It marks the date when women have to work until uh, this date to make the same as that was made by their male counterparts in the previous year on average. And for women of color, that date actually comes much later in the year. Dr. Joe Biden today is sharing her own story of being paid less than a male colleague. Uh, is that relevant to you? Is there something Congress can do about it? 
It is very relevant to me because as you said, um, this, this is unequal payday for some women, but for black women, especially a black woman here in the South, it is not until August that we get to the point where we have parity with white men and um, what we're able to make in this country. And the, the problem with all of this is we often don't know. That's why the Lily Ledbetter Act was put in place because Lily Ledbetter from my home state of Alabama didn't even know that she was making less than her male counterparts. And when she tried to sue, it was too late and the time had passed. But there are so many opportunities within the workforce where we're even told we're not supposed to discuss what we're making. And we often relegate women to jobs that women do. And so we need to make sure that when we are expanding access and when we're looking at how we build this country back better, post the pandemic, we saw so many women leaving the workforce in December, women who have been forced into care positions and moved out of the workforce just by the virtue of this pandemic. We have to make sure that we're looking at all of these things. When we look at our infrastructure, when we look at how we get people back into the workforce and building our economy, making sure that women who have been disproportionately impacted by this pandemic are elevated. All right, Representative Nakima Williams, thanks very much for being with us on those topics. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.